Pawn Saga 5. This right here is my Predator Pawn. These are my Red Oscars, Tiger Oscars. I have Albino Oscars in here. I have Azul Peacock Bass in here. I have Kel Berry Peacock Bass in here. I have Silver Arowanas in here. I have different plants in here. But it didn't always used to look like this. Welcome to my journey. Make sure you subscribe for more. So on day one, I started off with four Silver Arowanas, two Kel Berry Peacock Bass, and one Azul Peacock Bass. By day 18, I had lost a Silver Arowana and I decided to go and get another Azul Peacock Bass. By day 24, you can already see how they're growing. They're eating well, they're tearing these pellets up. They are fast and full of energy, and not to mention, highly aggressive. They show no mercy on these pellets or anything that touches the water that resembles food. They are predators by nature. Don't let those cute faces and their size fool you. By day 42, you can already see that they're putting on some more size. The arowanas are around 10 inches and the peacock bass, they're about seven inches. The arowanas are always swimming towards the surface. This is because they have lungs and they need air to breathe. I've never seen them sleep. I'm doing the routine water change right here because I feed them a lot and so they create lots of waste. And because of this, I have to do water changes twice a week just to stay on top of the clarity of the water and keep the pH balance under control. If the nitrates get too high, it can result in loss of fish. And that's a nightmare that no fish keeper wants to wake up to in the morning. Go ahead, get it. There you go. When the fish feel comfortable with you, they will come up. But it takes trust. These guys are getting huge and aggressive. By day 63, you can see a noticeable difference in their size. Not only that, you can see a noticeable difference in their colors and the patterns that they display. But that comes with the territory when you're raising monster fish. By day 85, these guys are really active and getting really big. At this point, I now realize that this tank is getting too small for them. This is my first time keeping monster fish and they've grown so much within a short time frame that I've had them. It's been three months now and you can see how big they've gotten and they are destroying anything that touches the water. Crickets, feeder fish, pellets, whatever hits the water, they're gonna hit it. It's so exciting to watch them eat and they're really personable. They're always looking out the glass, waiting for me to feed them. They are just so fascinating to watch. And especially when you have them when they're small and you watch how fast they grow, it's absolutely mind blowing. And as a fish keeper, I never forget these moments. Yes, big is an understatement. At this point, it's clear to me that they're going to outgrow this grow out tank, which is a 75 gallon, faster than I anticipated. And now I have to think about plans to build a pond in my backyard, just so I can accommodate their size. The water looks a little cloudy due to a beneficial bacteria bloom, but it will clear up soon. On this day, I went out and I picked me up some Oscars. These are red Oscars, they're babies. 
the reason why I got the Oscars last is because I've owned Oscars in the past and I know how fast they grow. They would have grown too big, too fast, and started bullying the rest of the fish that are in my tank. These guys are what you call tank busters. When it comes to this title, they want all the smoke. These arowana fish, they are known to jump out of the water in the wild to grab their prey off of tree limbs. Oh, and one tiny detail I forgot to mention. They also have teeth. And before you know it, just like that, what started off as an indoor journey was now about to make its way outside. First things first, I was going to originally build my pond out of wood, but when I got to the cash register, it was more than I expected because it was during the pandemic and prices of materials had gone up. So a wooden pond that was only supposed to cost me $200 in total was now about to cost me almost $1,000 in materials, bruh. And yeah, about that. This right here, it's an 8x8 eight eight poly stock tank. So what that means is, it's 8 feet long and 8 feet wide. Something of this size is able to hold up to 700 gallons of water. And to the right hand side, you see my PVC pipe, my cinder block concrete, and you also see a little, uh, a little crate that has lava rock in it. I'll show you what I do with that stuff later. Here in sunny South Florida, it gets hot. So there's a couple of reasons why you need to have shade over your pond. The first reason is you don't want the water temperatures in the pond to rise too high to the point to where it starts to cook your fish. And the second reason is when pond water comes in direct sunlight, it can cause an algae bloom, which basically means your water will turn green and you won't be able to see any of your fish. Third reason is you want a nice cool spot to sit when you observe your fish during the daytime. This shade tent structure is six feet tall and 10 feet wide, which is perfect for me. Here, I place some root barrier in the section where I'm gonna be sitting the pond. Just in case later down the road, I wanna put some mulch around it, or if I wanna put some pebbles around it, and I don't want any weeds to pop up. The next thing I had to figure out was how I was gonna actually power the pond. With a lot of research, I decided to put an outlet in my backyard all by myself. It was a lot of work, but it was worth it, and I learned a lot of things along the way. I basically dug up dirt from the ground, created a ditch, um, and basically, uh, yeah, made my own outlet. Ran this underground. <sighs> Through the trenches. What? Through here, put this up on here. I'm not gonna lie. Putting an outlet in the backyard is pretty cool and probably one of the most rewarding things that I learned how to do. But I'm not even gonna front. This outlet was mad annoying and gave me a lot of problems. But I worked on it day and night and eventually I got it to work. All right, so for this project, I'm gonna be using eight bags of clay sand, a bag of lava rock, got a couple PVC fittings. Let's go. So right here, I'm giving this clay sand a rinse because I don't want extra dust particles in my pond. Right here, I'm also giving the lava rock a rinse as well because I don't want extra dust in my filtration system either. I turn this ordinary 32 gallon garbage bin into a DIY filter for my pond. The DIY filter that also helps you with clear water. This filter build is a beast of a filtration system. I have to give myself a pat on the back for building this one and also helps you with easy water changes. 
this simple modification definitely comes in handy. The sand has been added. Now it's time to fill the pond with water. This part right here was so satisfying, knowing through all the trials and tribulations I faced, trying to get this pond up and running, I couldn't even, I can't even put into words really. It was a struggle, hot days, long nights, but at the end of the day, this is well worth it. I was able to see my fruits of labor. Hard work really does pay off. I was so proud of myself. I had to take a step back just to take it all in. Like, wow, I did that. Look at the size of these baby arowana fish, pushing a foot, barely fitting into the bucket. Don't down me. You good to go? Let me get some more water in there. Get the packing in there real quick. Get the cup in Y'all ready for that pond like this? Hey, relax. This pond looks absolutely amazing. And when I think about all the hard work I put into this, I still can't believe my eyes. These fish are living in my backyard in a pond that I put up for the very first time. Everything is matching aesthetically. We have the white, the purple, the green, the fish, their coloration, the sunlight beaming off the bottom of the sand. It looks crazy. Wow, look at the colors on these fish just popping out. Look at the green grass, the pebbles at the bottom. This right here is truly majestic. To you, this may seem like an ordinary pond, but to me, every time I look at it, I see something more. It's a constant reminder to myself that nothing happens overnight. You have to have patience. You have to trust the process. Being out here, breathing in the fresh air, listening to the wildlife, the nature, the birds, this right here brings me peace. This right here is therapeutic for me. This right here, this is more than just a hobby to me. This right here is a passion. Welcome to Pond Soccer Five. Until next time. If you're new to the channel, thanks for watching Pond Saga 5.